by virtue of the authority conferred upon me, I complicate this gathering. I, I, I constitute this gathering as a complication of the University of Cape Town. You may be seated. <laughs> As I said earlier, a celebration disguised as graduation. Can I ask you to stand for the national anthem?
please remain standing. Vice Chancellor, I have the honor to invite Duncan Angwenye, Deputy Secretary General of the SRC, to read the university dedication. Hello, thank you, Loretta Paris. So, my name is Duncan Angwenye. I'm from Kenya, the Student Representative Council. So, I'm going to read you the university dedication. At this time of celebration, we, the members of the University of Cape Town, reaffirm our mission to nurture rational to nurture rational and creative thought and free inquiry, to strive for excellence in teaching and research, to educate for life, and to address the challenges of our society. We undertake to advance these ideals in a spirit of freedom and responsibility and through consultation and debate. We celebrate our founders, benefactors, and predecessors, those who have built the fabric and nourished the values of UCT. To those of you who will graduate today, we wish you courage, wisdom, and purpose. To those who will leave the university to learn and work elsewhere, may you be sustained by those values which unite us here today and advance them in the world beyond. A love of truth and, a love of, truth and of learning, and of this, our university. Thank you. You may be seated. We would like to invite opera singer Nombulo Yende to perform today.
That was Nombulela, who treated us to una voce poco for an aria from the barber from Sevilla. Ladies and gentlemen, you may have noticed that music is an important element of this celebration. And of course, you may be tempted to think that these are performers that we pay, we hire them to come and perform at UCT, but no, they are our students. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about them. The procession was led by Sky Dladla and Black Roots Marimbas. They're an ensemble made out of South African College of Music students. One of the members, Dudu Ndlovu, is graduating with honors in African studies next week. The poem of praise, the Mbongo, was performed in honor of the graduates, their family, their friends, by artist and UCT music graduate, Nalisa Sampe M. Twinwalwa, whose stage name is Sange M. Sange graduates with honors in education today, and she also teaches in a private school. The national anthem was accompanied on the organ by Alexius Vicatus. Alexius is recently registered for a PhD in the field of X-ray crystallography in chemistry. After obtaining a distinction in his master's degree in the same field, he was also one of six students worldwide and the only student in Africa to receive the Ludo Frevel Scholarship, which is an award to support the education and research program of promising graduate students in crystallog crystallography related fields. Another South African College of Music student, Kevin Kim, accompanied Nombulelo in the dis dazzling area that she just performed. Can we get it? Thank you. <laughs> then finally, um, Nombulelo, um, who's just performed, has also recently won first prize, as well as the audience prize at the Conquers International de Belchanto Vicento Bellini competition in France. <laughs> if you would like to hear her sing again, she's a soloist in the up upcoming opera Romeo and Juliet at Arscape next month. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our students. So once again, a very warm welcome from my side to this event this evening. As I said to you earlier, it is a celebration of a very important moment in the life of the students, soon to be alumni of this university. And of course, it's, a, it's an important moment for you as family, as friends and partners. And of course, as our graduates leave the university, we would like to have, to have them leave with a message of, of inspiration. And so what we normally do at this event is to have a speaker. And tonight you're in for a treat, and I'm going to introduce you to our guest speaker, Rapelang Rabana. She's a woman who started her own business, was featured on the cover of Forbes Africa magazine, and was invited to join a panel at the World Economic Forum, the annual meeting in Davos in 2012, all before she turned 30. Rapelang Rabana is the founder and chair of Rekindle Learning, a dynamic learning tech company providing smart learning applications that improve learning outcomes for businesses and for educational institutions. Rekindle Learning was profiled in the McKinsey Lions Go Digital Report as a striking innovation in mobile learning. She's also a partner at the private equity firm, Nisella Capital. From her first startup straight out of university called Diego, to chief digital officer at one of South Africa's largest IT companies, Rapalang has amassed over 13 years experience in building tech. Amongst other roles, Rapalang also serves as a member of the World Economic Forum Global Future Council on Entrepreneurship, 
as well as on the boards of Standard Chartered Bank Botswana Education Trust and Imagine Worldwide. Rapelang regularly speaks at local and international platforms. But of course, the one thing that I have to highlight this evening is that she has a B Business Science Computer Science Honours and an MSc from the University of Cape Town. And that she and she has, on top of that honor, she has received numerous honors and awards, including the Forbes 30 Under 30, Africa's Best Young Entrepreneur, Giselle 100 Africa, United Nations World Youth Summit Awards Euro, Harambe Entrepreneur, Endeavor High Impact Entrepreneur, and Oprah Magazine O Power List. So I give you Rapelang Rabana. Thank you very much for that introduction. I never like it to be fully read, but you did it so beautifully, so I could sit comfortably while you did it. I never made it to my master's graduation ceremony, so I'm very delighted to finally wear the master's gown um, today and share a bit of my story with you. I always get a little bit um, uncomfortable when people say, come and do an inspirational speech, because I don't know that I'm a motivational speaker. I believe in speaking truth to power. And for those who are ready to have honest reflections with themselves, it often takes them a long way further in their careers. My entrepreneurship journey started in 2005 when I graduated with my business science degree from UCT. Um, with my fellow classmates, we launched Yego. Um, my fellow classmates were also in my computer science class. And Yego was essentially predecessors to what you guys now use as WhatsApp and Viber, so mobile voice of IP. If you can remember back in 2006, before Android, before iPhone, when your best phone was your Windows mobile phones and your Nokia E-series phones, I see some heads, yeah, that's very distant past. And as students, we never had enough money to make phone calls, so we'd always send each other, please call me. Um, one please call me would mean we're meeting at five o'clock and two please call me saying means you're changing it to six o'clock. And we really thought that there had to be a better way to do life. Um, and with the advent of technology and the internet, we thought we could build something in that direction. So the power of the internet for me has really displayed itself in my life because a group of young students sitting in a little apartment in Cape Town were able to build world-class technology at a time where this technology was just emerging worldwide. We taught ourselves everything that we needed to know about how to build the software, how to run a business online. We literally Googled our way to success. Through the knowledge and expertise we built through this um, first business, it allowed us to expand um, our influence. We didn't have any social or financial capital starting out, but by virtue of the fact that we could prove that we were good at one thing in the world, it set us on an amazing journey and gave us so much credibility. By the time we launched in February of 2007, there were just three companies globally um, with similar technologies that had launched, one in Israel and one in the UK. Um, with far, far more funding. And we were managing to do this sitting around a dining room table in a little apartment with ADSL. It's not like the American stories. We didn't have garages. <laughs> Such is the leveling and inclusive power of the internet that a group of bright-eyed students could achieve this with such limited resources. A local operator bought Diego in early 2009-2010 um, and it was this formative experience that informs my view of the world today. My most recent company, Rekindle Learning, is still in the tech space, and you heard a bit about that, but really around how do we bring the benefits of technology to learning and education. To the graduates that we're here to honor, almost 15 years ago, I was in your shoes. In December of 2005, I was a 22-year-old graduate of a business science computer science degree from UCT. Less than eight years later, I was featured on the cover of Forbes Africa alongside Wendy Ackerman of Pick and Pay as a symbol of the next generation of African entrepreneurs um, changing how things appear in technology on the continent. 
I've had an extraordinary journey, and no one is more surprised than me. I still ask myself, how in the world did this all happen? In trying to understand the purpose of my story, the relevance of my journey, I've been drawn to some simple truths. That the way we understand how value and success is created in the world today is changing fundamentally. It is no longer about having something that nobody else has, but it is more about knowing who you are, what you have, what you want to contribute, and using that to your advantage. It's about tapping into your internal wisdom. It's about the awareness to see and follow your curiosities. The things that other people may think are mundane or a fact of life or irrelevant, those are the things that may well be a source of value for your life. All I have ever tried to do was to follow the rhythm of my own soul and I had no idea it would take me so far. I believe that greater self-awareness has been quintessential to everything I've been able to achieve. Because you see, innovation, entrepreneurship, business, leadership, these are not things that you acquire from an external source. Personal mastery is about continually expanding one's ability to create the results in life that we truly seek. Our society teaches us to spend a lot of time, and in your times with social media, it's even harder. But our society teaches us to spend a lot of time looking out there for success, looking at people like me. But the ability to drive yourself to your full potential starts with greater self-awareness. It determines your ability to perform better, to lead more effectively. Unfortunately, we don't talk about it enough and we don't see it in syllabus and curriculum. In one of my favorite books, Insight, by Tasha Urich, she says that 95% of people think they are self-aware, but in reality, only 10 to 15% actually are. I found that this process of building businesses, driving change, being entrepreneurial, creating innovations in whatever work you do, is a lot more organic and subtle, and starts from a place that is not so business-like, not so academic. Personal mastery goes beyond competence and skills, beyond spirituality. It means approaching one's life as a creative work, living life from a creative as opposed to a reactive point of view. That creative work is the contribution you seek to make in this world within your lifetime. Let me begin at the beginning of my journey of building greater self-awareness and personal mastery. I must have been about 11 years old. I'm sitting in a geography class, and geography wasn't one of my favorite subjects. And I was so, so bored. I remember looking right out the window into the sunlight, trying to blind myself. I was actually so bored. I must have been 11 years old when I first asked myself the question, what are you really doing? And what is this life thing really, really about? You see, it just wasn't adding up to me anymore. I would look back at primary school, um, and we worked our way through the system that was called primary school, and I was, got to the end, and now I'm a year older, but I'm at the bottom of a new system called high school. And I'm supposed to work my way through that. And then I'm supposed to go to university, do that system. And then I'm supposed to join a large organization and do that for 20 years. And I started wondering, is my whole life about working systems? When do I begin to live more intentionally? When do I do me? And the single most important thing I have done in my life to bring me to the point where I'm in front of you today is to stay close to those questions and not be afraid of them to try and have honest reflections with myself about what I truly want and what I think is happening right now. It is one of the hardest things to do, and it catches so many people out. My decision to be an entrepreneur had very little to do with business or wanting to be a boss or make lots of money or manage an organization. I remember as a child growing up, I assumed, or probably I was told, by people older than me, smarter than me, you know, the adults, the smart ones, 
that, you know, there's a structure called life and all you've got to do is, you know, flow through it, do what you're told, mean well, do the right things. I mean, you'll get to this place where you're happy and successful and fulfilled. And I started to get a sneaky suspicion that it doesn't quite work like that. And if I kept going on autopilot like this, I might not make it. By the time I was university graduation, I was relatively convinced that this wasn't true, that the adults hadn't figured out this whole life thing. And if I kept going on like this and not living more intentionally, I wasn't going to get anywhere. So the beginning of my journey in deciding to chart my own path and do the stuff I wanted to do was an entrepreneur. And it came from one simple and very, very powerful realization. I realized that everyone, no matter how confident they looked, no matter how smart they were, that everyone, and absolutely everyone, was winging it. Nobody had been to the end of life and come back to tell us how it was. Everyone had their ideas about what was supposed to happen in this lifetime and were just making that work. And I remember having dinner with my parents during one of the school holidays at UCT. And my parents are my north and south, they're everything to me. And I thought to myself, oh my God, they are winging it too. <laughs> Steve Jobs says it best with the words, everything around you that you call life was made up by people that were no smarter than you. And you can change it, you can influence it, shake off this erroneous notion that life is there and you're just going to live in it versus embrace it, change it, improve it, make your mark upon it. Steve Jobs' words ring so true because to think differently, to bring new ideas, to bring change, the things you're going to be tasked with wherever you go, you need a healthy dose of skepticism about how the world works and the systems that run it. They all seem so solid because we were born into it and it was always there, secure and stable. But underneath it, if you really, really look closely, you will realize that most of our lives are made up and they were made up by someone who was also winging it at some point. So I decided at graduation time if everyone else is winging it, why can't I? My decision was to become an entrepreneur, but that is not to say that is everyone's choice. The point is that it was a time to live more deliberately, to take ownership of making my life work. I could no longer keep blaming my parents for my unhappiness or not getting what I wanted. I could no longer keep blaming other things outside of me. And for, new, for me at the time, I knew that the job options would either box me as a software developer or as a business consultant, because that's how large organizations were organized. And no way was I gonna be able to do both, the technology and the business. I also knew that I was tired of working systems and that the most important thing to, for me at the time was to be able to decide what I gave my time and attention to because to me that determined who I would become in the next 10 years. So I gave up the lucrative job opportunities and guaranteed safety and convinced my parents to continue to house and feed me for a few years while I continued to struggle like a student. Many people always ask me, how did you get through it over the years? And so often they're disappointed by my answer. There is a simple equation that has guided me throughout my life. Your unique contribution and hard work over time creates value that yields success. Your unique contribution plus hard work over time creates value that yields success. Most people believe that a little bit, but they also believe that other factors are more influential like how rich your parents were, which school you went to, if you have some powerful or influential friends, if you know important people that give you contracts, if you were white, if you live in a white neighborhood, and the list goes on and on. Yes, there are many factors that play a role, but they were never deciding factors. Hard work alone is a noble part of that equation. 
but it is also not enough. Otherwise, domestic workers and miners would be the wealthiest people in this country. You must be in a position to make deliberate and intentional choices to decide what your contribution is going to be. As educated young people with opportunities, you are in that position now. Now you are required to bring your whole self to the table, not just your intellect. It is also not enough to be a good person, to do what you're told, to try hard, to be on time every day, to mean well. At the end of the day, you could teach a dog to do that. It is not enough to succeed. Until you activate your will, until you believe in something, you have not even begun to live. And the sad reality is that you could spend your whole life, even get to UCT to this moment, living in autopilot. But it is the privilege and the necessity that arises with being human, with being a leader that you can be, that you must be intentional. You must project your will and convictions into the world and spend your life making them true. You are some of the lucky few people in this country that are in a position to do so. So what does personal mastery and awareness or self-awareness really mean? When I talk about personal mastery and self-awareness, um, it can be broken down into two simple things. One. The first is to continually clarify what is important to you. It's easy to get busy in life, the humdrum of life to keep going, moving from one urgent thing to another, one event to another, to occupy yourself with people and things. And you can actually keep going like this with only a vague or incomplete picture of what you really want. The second part of personal mastery is to continually learn to see your current reality more clearly and more accurately. Basically, I'm saying it's the ability to catch yourself when you're lying to yourself, when you're settling into counterproductive relationships or situations that don't serve you, when you're not facing the reality about what is going on in a work project at home, in your personal life, because it's just too much, so much easier not to be honest with yourself because nobody will know anyway, right? This juxtaposition of vision, what you want, and a clear picture of your current reality relative to this vision generates what Peter Senge calls creative tension. And it's a force that wants to bring these two things together because there's a natural tendency to seek resolution. The essence of personal mastery is learning how to generate and sustain that creative tension in our lives. It's kind of like a rubber band. When you stretch it on both sides, it gets that creative tension. On one side is your vision, what you really want, and on the other side is your creative or current reality. And this tension, you know when I let this rubber band go, it can shoot quite far, right? and the harder I pull at it, the greater the tension. This creative tension is a universal law, much like gravity, and you won't get anywhere in life without activating this law. It should be obvious to us, like gravity is today, but we don't study it so much. And until Newton defined gravity, we also didn't know about it, even though it was all around us. Creative tension is indeed a law of life. And there are so many people, even older than you, that don't know this law. So you will doubt that it is true, even after I have told you. If there is no tension, the rubber band flops, nothing moves, there's no propulsion, and you don't get very far. Why wouldn't there be tension? It could be from either one of the sides. Either you don't know what you want. You don't have a conviction in something yet that you want to make a reality. You don't want to figure out how to make up something, as Steve Jobs said. Or you were never conditioned in your upbringing to believe and to know that you were meant to choose. You were meant to manifest your reality into the world. 
If you have no driving goal and you're still living in autopilot, waiting for your real life to start happening, waiting for that day when you feel smart enough, old enough, rich enough, or whatever excuse your mind can come up with to excuse you from making a decision and investing in a choice. It is said that successful people know what they want and not so successful people know what they don't want, but make the mistake of thinking it's the same thing. Knowing what you don't want, what you don't like, isn't actually an answer. It's a very passive form of living. Many people get into that mode where they think that because they, don't, they know what they don't like or don't want, that you've actually made a decision, when it's not a decision at all. Like quitting your job because you don't like it, or stopping studying or not doing a project because you don't like it. It's as if happiness is supposed to fall on your lap, as if the world owes it to you to give you happiness and success, as if you have a right to be upset with the world for not giving you something that you want. And if you throw your arms up in the air enough times with enough frustration, you hope that the world will finally give you what, deserve, what you deserve. That if you complain enough, that if you express enough negativity about life, that the heavens will open and your life will switch into greatness because you know you're special. This flawed understanding of the world and life can trap so many people, for the universe owes you nothing. Knowing what you don't like and what you don't want and how unhappy you are remains your problem. You have been armed with a brain and something incredibly powerful than God-given, choice, the power to choose. It is the privilege of being human. And as soon as you have re realized that you've chosen unhappiness, you have chosen dissatisfaction, then you can choose something else. And we often make these choices quietly, subconsciously, and blame it on others. The sooner you see that you have chosen your current situation, then you can choose otherwise and dream even bigger. The only forward momentum in life comes from knowing what you want. And neither the world, nor your parents, nor your friends can do that for you. The second reason that the rubber band may not have any tension is that on the other side, your ability to assess your current reality isn't as truthful as it should be. And this really comes down to your ability to have honest conversations with yourself and the people around you. Think about that friend who wants to be a writer but hasn't written for pleasure in years and doesn't want to practice by taking the odd writing job here and there. Or the person who wants to build their own bank but thinks it's below them to start at the bottom of the bank and learn about and do every menial job to learn how the whole system works. The person who is passionate about starting X business but has never read past the first 10 pages of a Google search hasn't read about the people who started businesses in that sector, doesn't read about the companies in that sector and what gaps they may be, and they're just waiting for someone to fund them. The human mind has an uncanny ability to lie to itself, and understanding of self is key to see past that. A foundation of daily and honest self-reflection and conversations about where you are in your current reality is the only way to build and improve. Truthful and humble reflection is the greatest power because there is no limit on a human being's ability to improve and excel in the long term. Hard work and your unique contribution over time creates value that yields success. I get that, and only now am I lucky to realize why it was so easy for me to believe that. It really comes down to my parents. My parents grew up in abject poverty, the kind of poverty where you walk to school in the winter without any shoes. They were the first to graduate in their respective families, and as a child I watched them excel in their professional careers as architect, as an electrical engineer and they ran so many businesses, so many projects, in their commitment to create the life they wanted for themselves and their children. And then in my early teens, I watched them 
lose everything they had built. And that could have been the end, and you may have never heard of me today. But lo and behold, I saw them get up and do it all over again. So by the time I was in your shoes, finishing university, I had seen my parents start with nothing and create everything twice over. So this equation for me was never a suggestion, a myth, a thought. It was one of the few truths I knew for sure. So today I want to be for you what my parents were for me. That hard work and excellence in your unique contribution over a sustained period of time creates value that yields success. It's been a long journey, and there haven't always been clarity in my life that I am always on the right track. But one particular time, a few years ago, I was about to get on a flight from Haboroni, I mean from Johannesburg to Haboroni, and I sat next to a gentleman, and we happened to start speaking. And he said, you know, my daughter's name is also Rappelang. And I said, that's wonderful. I've never met another Rappelang. I would love to meet her one day. And we chatted it some more, and eventually he tells me the story that before his three-year-old daughter was born, his wife and him were looking for a name. They wanted a Tswana name, an unusual name, and they couldn't quite figure it out. Until one day they saw something on TV, and it was this amazing story about this amazing girl, he said. And the name, it was exactly what they had been looking for. And without even talking to each other, they knew that this was the name. And he was trying to remember the name of this person he saw on TV. And I'm like, is it Rappelang Raban? And his eyes lit up, and my eyes lit up. And I thought the whole plane was about to come out of the sky as I wondered how in this world does such a thing happen. A few months later, I met baby Rappelang. And it was for me one of the most amazing experiences of my life to know that the things I have chosen to do and the life I have chosen to live could have had an influence so much further than I could have ever anticipated. Let me leave you with this quote by the Chinese philosopher Confucius. When we are born, we are given two lives. Your second life begins the day you realize you only have one life. Thank you very much. So in essence, if I heard correctly, dream, but dream with purpose. And wing it, but wing it with purpose. Thank you, Rapilang, for sharing your inspiration and your journey with us this evening. By virtue of the authority conferred upon me, I admit to the degree specified and grant the diplomas and certificates specified to the candidates recorded as in, in, in absentia. I shall now grant the diplomas and certificates and admit to the degree specified the candidates to be presented to me. Vice-Chancellor, I have the honor to present to you for the Advanced Certificate in Education in Adult Education, Khadija Arendt.
Julita Dorman. Adrienne Ruben Hellenberg. Lamis Ismail. Shoma Moodley. Stephanie Christine Nelson. <laughs> For the Higher Certificate in Education in Adult Education, Norman Abrams. Anna Katrina Baron. With distinction, Selwyn Alistair Bartlett. Aretha Buck. <laughs> Pumeza Patience, Boy Welisa. With distinction, Romilda Francel Collins. <laughs> With distinction, Dawood Davids. Colin Leroy Del Khan. With distinction, Mohammed Sadiq Desai. With distinction, Taryn Dirks. Melanie Denise Engelbrecht. <laughs> non si chelelo Theodora Galelike.
Yolanda George. Nuran Harris. Zulfa Hartley. With distinction, Tristan Kyle Johannes. Mary Jones. With distinction, Helena Dolfina Lagrange. <laughs> Elton Earl McPherson. Simbongiseni Madlania. LZ Jacqueline Marcus. With distinction, Martina Martin. <laughs> Charmaine Dolores Maseko. Pindile Prisca Maseko. With distinction, Sharon Mirinde Masena. Babalwa Babs Mbongo. Victoria Dolly Mzanga. Kurt Minar. <laughs> Annie Mitchell. Nompendulo Rosebud Mpongwana.
Pumla Ngemtu. Tozama Amelia Nochati. Melissa Ross. Gabiba Rossier. Faislin Safudin Ula. Gafita Santon. Tandiwe Shumba. Happy boy, Sonyati. With distinction, Antoinette Stevens. Mabelandine Twani. Nosipo Cornelia Tiembile. Deborah Erika van der Berg. Michael John van Diemen. Petronella Watts. <laughs> With distinction, Richard Rodney Wesson. Carmen Bitboy. <laughs> Sindiswa Ivy Zibaya. For the postgraduate, <laughs> for
for the Postgraduate Diploma in Education in Higher Education Studies, Fatima Parker. For the Postgraduate Diploma in Educational Technology, Mohammed Abdelahi Ahmed. With distinction, Nelisi Lungelo Trebekulu. With distinction, Marjorie Sarah Kabuye Batiibwe. Mary Babirwe Kaketo. Ntombikona Kuzwayo. Ntako Happy Mabunda. Kebo Nyondo. Kosana Alfred Sebeko. Monica Ndafa Shitieni. Wendy Elizabeth Thompson. Vice Chancellor, I have the honor to present to you for the postgraduate diploma in law, in criminology, law and society, Darian Gresham Hawk. Nomiedo Lindukule Numalo. Anki Jail Cinnamon. In environmental law, Mahira Hendricks. In labor law, Sivuyile Nyonwa. Masila K. Cornelius Viti. <laughs> For the degree of Bachelor of Laws, Kayla Abrams.
Kamel Daniel, Daniel Absalom. Samantha Ann Adams. Josephine Pearl Anthony. Aisha Aaron. Michael James Fell Bailey. Emma Nicole Benz. Jonathan Robert Beard. Monette Bezedenot. Hagen Jack Brumfontein. <laughs> Kiera Elizabeth Brescia. <laughs> Ked Marie Brink. Oliver Bruce. <laughs> Mohammed Shezad Kasim. <laughs> Shafika Kasim. Ravi Kumaran Chetty. <laughs> Mary Takuzwa Chinamasa. Sarah Conrad. <laughs> Matthew Mark Coliani. Simone da Camera <laughs> Cum Laude Daniel Dallas <laughs> Shueb Deti. Cum laude ratio Beth Davidson. Cum laude 
Joshua Davis. Karina Teresa de Oliveira. William Dayara. Camelita Yacinta Dos Ramos. <laughs> Quentin Duplessis. <laughs> Kristen Elliott. Rona Elizabeth Evans. Sarah Fakir. Nicole Jade Ferrer. Christopher Stanley Fisher. <laughs> Rory Ero Franca. <laughs> Claudia Maria Heiss. Jason David George. <laughs> Sheehan Geber. <laughs> Magna Cum Laude. Roren Irene Hedman. <laughs> Cum laude, Rebecca Emmy Gore. <laughs> Priyanka Gavinder. Sashen Governor. <laughs> Richard Neville Griffin. <laughs> Lizzo Hendricks. Teba Henler. <laughs> Mary
Megan Judith Hinn. Ryan David Hort. Sarah Jane Honey. Magna Cum Laude Ryan Michael Hopkins. Lauren Ann Howell. <laughs> Jami Jacobs. Keegan Jacobs. <laughs> Rara Johnson. Tessa Rose Johnson. <laughs> Hugh Plato Jocelyn. <laughs> Doreen Nabisele Kabuzi. Kimi Frederick James Clopper Simone Kuhn Elizabeth Jane Klichler. <laughs> Carl Lorenz Ribetro. Margaret Lees. <laughs> Muhammad Hashim Logde. Aisha Lotter. <laughs> Magna Cum Laude, Lauren Carol Loxton. Don't to make a little magua.
Trustee Lungelo Malindisa. Cum laude Samantha Mason. Julie Hannah Massin. <laughs> Le Bonnet Machise. Modern Maoneke <laughs> Sipoka Zisuko Jawahir Matani <laughs> Richard Stowe McLean. Kristen Simone Merrin. <laughs> Anati Boipelo Mosone. <laughs> Kahiso Mputi. Boniswa Mzimela. Um, Tanya Wadin Namasis. Annalisa Nokwanda Nebele. <laughs> Nelisi Wesley Vian Lapo. Cum laude Joshua John Nicholson. <laughs> Ngobo Ningiza. Lizeka Kanyisa Nondabula Muhammad Yusuf Omar Michael George Pappas Azel Tiffany Park. <laughs> Nigel Timothy Patel.
Rebecca Frances Pereira. Jodine Peterson. Michael John Peterson. Robin Lee Peterson. Alex Pinner. <laughs> Ashley Shiley Knet Mankies. Sibongi Le Tami Khalana. Lizoletu David Rensberg. Nevenka Ristek. Scott Roberts. Cum laude Catherine Rodson. Nicole Lewis Ruff. <laughs> Neo Kun Rettis. <laughs> Robin Danielle Samuels. Sarimbok. <laughs> Tanya Mary Halvan Shipmaker. Kata Sopel Kelly Siase. Retabile Sebosa. Ntabiseng Selepe. Sikelelo Nompmelelo Shandu Justin Benita Shia Could you want Natalie Shuniwa? <laughs> Ma 
Lompumbele Los Beko. Carla Erika Slade. Savannah Tuscany Smith. Callan Richard Smith. Jason Samuel Stewart. Yonela Cynthia Tabane. Gabriela Tamar Tadmo. <laughs> Naira Trihat. <laughs> Kristen Van Bick. Megan Hian van Brinnen. <laughs> Kalan Alexandra van Rensberg. <laughs> Amy Grace Walker. Magna Cum Laude, Catherine Tara Willis Smith. <laughs> Zola Yaka. Cum laude Bradley Arthur Zibel. Vice Chancellor, I have the honor to present to you for the degree of Bachelor of Education Honors, Sipiwosake Bengu. Bongekile Nontlantla Butelezi. Chikondi Maria Chikuse. Bulelwa Guguletu Ploshana. <laughs> N 
Mutombi Kaise Klas Nyoko. Bashira Klein. Margot Elizabeth Lurie. <laughs> Nandipa Miranda Luciti. With first class, Chloe Murray. With first class, Petunia Muteiwana. Mabunga <laughs> Lusanda Ntikina Amina Nazir Ahmed Patel. <laughs> Sipenati Kumbelo. Neliswa Sange Sampi Unelwa. <laughs> Alungile Roger Williams. For the degree of Master of Education in Applied Language and Literary Studies, with distinction, Talia Ruth Ransiman. In Higher Education Studies, with distinction, Thomas Van Heerden. For the degree of Master of Philosophy in Education in Adult Education, Vanessa Mary Davidson. Vice Chancellor, I have the honor to, to present to you for the degree of Master of Laws in Commercial Law Mena Bakari Ashtiva. Atku Khan. Simone Dominic Carorison.
Kennedy Macharia Shege. Joseph Kanyamula Chimtolo. Tess Evelyn Christensen. Hannah Talia Delit. <laughs> Mosa Faith Dube. Harris Godfrey Hardcastle. <laughs> Tracy Lee Juniors. <laughs> Asma Khalifa. With distinction, Gabriel Koski. Moshita Gerard Makara. Mokoro Marius Makara. Kidney Rue Pochia Maleke Lineo Agnes Moleleki Christine Mohonja Orlando. Mwimba Shimuka Simwinga. Luto Sobuza. Babalo Stimele <laughs> Brownell McHenry Ure For the degree of Master of Laws in Dispute Resolution, Marion Ninsima. <laughs> Alfonso Page. Thomas Kimtai Rotish. <laughs> Songezo Steven Sifumba.
Captain Michelle Thomas. For the degree of Master of Laws in Environmental Law, Tamlin Kate Duncan. Zara Megan. Sharon Amisi Ndori. Rudolf Johannes Henrik Potters. Margot Trabert. For the degree of Master of Laws in Intellectual Property Law, Mazinza Margaret Malambo. Ruth Mering. Patrick Skuz. For the degree of Master of Laws in International Trade Law, Nokuzola Sipiwe Kosi. <laughs> Isabel Rerato Kumaro. Sifiso Madunganda. <laughs> Michael Sizi Mkize. Michael Kyoko Mwimi. <laughs> Boy to Melo, Michelle Mtatwana Ramakopa. For the degree of Master of Laws in Labor Law, Sifiso Novella. <laughs> For the degree of Master of Laws in Marine and Environmental Law, with distinction, Tanya Catherine Brody Rudolph. Jima Kate Hammond. For the degree of Master of Laws in Private Law and Human Rights, Namsha Mlibokazi Bula. We 
with distinction with distinction Lisa van Nikik. For the degree of Master of Laws in Shipping Law, Mayuri Dyer. Zama Tiba Masikane. Dumisani Theophilus Ntuli. Solange Dagama Sesha. For the degree of Master of Laws in Tax Law, Chimwemwe Mulenga Waria. <laughs> Nadia Antoinette Furi. Natalie McDonald Governor <laughs> Zunzo Akona Kati. <laughs> Tumelo James Lekanyo. Sibusisiwe Zizipo Makubela. For, for the degree of Master of Laws, in commercial law, Moselisi Grace Kiba. In public law, Nokulunga Zondi. In tax law, Rinal Roxanne Peterson. For the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Commercial Law. For a thesis which assesses for a thesis which assesses Nigeria's framework for private-public partnerships and identifies strength in the South African model for possible application to protect investors' assets and to enhance respect for contracts by all parties to public-private partnership arrangements in Nigeria, Augustine Edobo Arimoro. For a thesis which explores the interface between copyright and competition law and compares the South African and Nigerian regulation regimes for collecting societies to determine whether they sufficiently address collecting societies' competition related concerns in copyright markets, Desmond Osareti or Yakoba.
for a thesis which examines the dynamics of the informal economy in Nigeria and explores the human rights scaffolding necessary to achieve decent work and to transition informal work to the formal economy, Abigail Emilomo Osiki. In private law, for a thesis which informs on BRICS strategies of persuasion, showing that BRICS pursues the legitimation and recognition for its state-centric networked order by rhetorically incarnating the, the reformed multilateral international order, Klaus Paul Kotsia. In public law, for a thesis which investigates how people engage with cultural traditions during breadwealth negotiation, highlights factors responsible for high breadwealth payments, and suggests policy sensitivity to people's lived realities in the formulation of legislation. Jen Chinonyerem Diara. For a thesis which uncovers ways in which marital rape is rendered invisible within the institutions where women seek protection and in juxtaposition and as the modalities through which marital rape is revealed and addressed within these environments. Nyasha Madrin Yvonne Karimakwenda. For a thesis showing how much sector responses to sexual violence in Kenya and South Africa contribute to fulfilling human rights. For, sorry. For a thesis showing how much sector responses to sexual violence in Kenya and South Africa contribute to fulfilling human rights state obligations and developing parameters for a victim centered approach which moves beyond achieving sector specific mandates to challenging systemic equalities. Ruth Nekulia Nekakani. In rhetoric studies, in rhetoric studies, for a thesis showing how the political rhetoric of the Namibian second democratically elected president, uh, Hifike Nyepunye Pohamba, shaped democracy in Port Apartheid, Namibia, Frida Nawiere Nanyeni. Vice Chancellor, I have the honor to present to you for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Education for a thesis which, which shows that although literacy learning in Namibia is based on ideas of schooled literacy that is highly autonomous, an ideological view of literacy learning will best fit the Namibian literacy context. Job Wazembua Hengari. For a thesis which shows that dominant discourses persist across time in representations of people in museums, but that it is possible to map a reimagining of museum display and colonial collections using a multimodal social semiotic framework. Medi Rao.
for a thesis which explores the meaning-making practices of Isitrosa English bilingual science learners and argues for the use of learners' full multilingual and multimodal repertoires, including their meshed everyday and scientific registers for successful science learning. Robin Lucy Tyler. That was a wonderful ceremony, wasn't it? So you wonder what we do sitting here, we're looking, sometimes you see us as if we're talking, we're admiring, of course, the graduates. But talking for myself, one of the things that I do, I watch fashion, so who what shoes people are wearing, what colors, <laughs> the new styles, earrings, and so on and so forth. It's catch up time. Me, I'm an academic, no time to shop. I look and then I just go and find exactly that thing. <laughs> so thank you so much for the update, guys. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. Well, the second thing we do is that, you know, graduation day is very special. So people buy new high heels. I don't know, I mean, you can come here in all stars, it will still be fine. But as it happens, everybody buys new high heels. Some people practice to walk in that because we, you know, it's not like it's, it comes automatically. You practice, you know? Uh, some people forget to practice. They get too busy. And these stairs are not very kind, you know? We must find a way to make sure that these stairs are kind so we can see often who hasn't practiced and who has practiced. Let me tell you, tonight wasn't too bad. It was just 73% that practiced, so just uh, not too bad, not too bad, not too bad, it's too good. So congratulations for everyone who practiced. Tell your friends who are graduating tomorrow and next week to practice the high heels. Tell them the, st the stairs are not very kind. The third thing we do is that we, we listen to what people say. After all, this is Africa. So during celebrations, what we do in Africa, we say are praise poems. And praise poems are different depending on which province and which ethnic group you come from. And we know which provinces rock it more, right? So, so we know if KZN is in the house, we can see by the attire, we can see if uh, Eastern Cape is in the house or Limpopo and so on, Namibia, Namibia always tops it, but it's not there today. Uh, <laughs> but, but so tonight, tonight we saw Eastern Cape came up tops, man. Eastern Cape. Is, okay. All right, so congratulations. I've done a million graduation ceremonies. It's the first time Eastern Cape takes the cup. Congratulations, congratulations. Congratulations, wonderful, wonderful. So let me say thank you to Rapelang. Rapelang, thank you so much for the speech. You know, it's not very easy to select who becomes a guest speaker at graduation ceremonies. So we want someone who can grab our attention, you know. Uh, but not only that, we want a good speaker, but we also want someone whose values resonate with ours. And you came up just that way. Not only because you're an alumni, but because you're a young person who we wouldn't mind cloning more like you. So thank you so much for your speech. It's been said that behind every graduate stands a very proud and very relieved family 
So to all the parents and families of graduates, step parents, friends and lovers of graduates and anyone else who helped pay UCT fees, who bought clothes for the graduates, or gave any of our graduates a stipend, my hope is that tonight you not only you do not only just feel relieved, but you're also very proud. Your bundle of joy, who finished high school not so long time ago, is now a UCT graduate. Did you get that? It's not just another graduate. It's a UCT graduate. So finally, you have a UCT graduate in the house. Now, I come from the township. You know, townships are generally the same. When there's a graduate in the family, the fridge changes. You know what I mean? So tomato sauce and mayonnaise in the fridge. So please, ladies and gentlemen, buy that tomato sauce and mayonnaise. a black text, I colonto. Utengu tomato sauce, no mayonnaise. So congratulations, because of Nande Kai. Graduates, yours has been a long journey. You hear some of you have been here for three years. Some of you, we're not, we're not gonna ask how long it took. Tonight, it is irrelevant. What matters, Oksalayo, you are here. You're graduating. You know, to get into UCT, it's tough to qualify. Not everyone qualifies. Even when you qualify, we still select a particular number. And here you are, you made it. And when you come into the university, during all week, we welcome you. And all we're looking forward to is this day. But then you've got to go to the lectures and work so that you get to this day. And sometimes it's tough, you know, you get humbled, you know, all 12 years of your basic education, you've been nailing it like 90, 100%. And then you get here, suddenly, you've got to celebrate 60%, 52%. So, you know, and, and I know the first few tests are a bit rough because that's not your thing, you know. But here you are, you made it. So congratulations on this wonderful achievement. Uh, we are really, really proud of you. We know that you work very hard. We know that you're gifted, but we also know that you work very hard. But hard as you have worked, you didn't get here on your own. The people sitting on your right, they supported you. They nurtured you. Some of them are here broke tonight because you are graduating. So I want you to stand, lift your scroll, wave at them as a sign of appreciation for the support that they granted you. Please stand. Come on. Stand. 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 stand, stand. <clears throat> beautiful. 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 Don't sit down. Keep standing. Keep standing. Keep standing. Keep standing. This is a test when I want to see whether students still listen to the VC. <laughs> Fantastic, wonderful, wonderful. Now, the people on your left, on your right, as much as they supported you and did all the good things, you wouldn't be here if the people on stage were not there. These are the people who prepared the lectures, they marked your assignments, good ones and bad ones. Even when you were mean, they came back to class to teach. So please, show them some love tonight by waving. It's always interesting the way to the academics ends quickly. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. So that's wonderful. But we are all here in this hall. There are people who are not here with us, and I want us to honor them, our professional admin and support staff. These are staff members, some of who house, feed all of our students. They maintain our university campus so that all of us can get on with our academic work, whose outputs we are celebrating tonight. There are also staff members who work here in the Sarah Batman Hall, and they work very hard to ensure that this wonderful occasion proceeds smoothly. I want everyone in the hall 
to stand and let's honor them by clapping hands for the work that they do. Thank you very much. Thank you. You may be seated. Graduates, this day signifies a new beginning for each and every one of you. In addition to earning the diplomas and degrees conferred upon you tonight, you have also earned the right to be associated with a very special group of people. You can now call yourself an alumni of the University of Cape Town. This day, also marks a wonderful milestone, not only in your lives, but also in the life of the university. We, as the university, can now associate ourselves with your success, which we know for sure will come, if it's not there already. As you walk out of this hall with your degree or your diploma, let me remind you that you will experience uncertainties, risks, dangers, and opportunities in the future. With the economy and rate of unemployment being what it is today, it is also possible that some of you may struggle to find jobs. But I want you to consider whatever happens to you, good and bad, simply as the raw materials out of which you will fashion your own new worlds. You do not need to be confident about what events might bring, but you do need to be confident in your own capacity to master events and to respond to them with grace and with intelligence, whatever events might occur. The education that you have received here at UCT has prepared you to be a trailblazer and not just an employee or a job seeker. So go out there and take up the challenge to become trailblazers. Note, it will not be easy because this constantly changing world of ours is not easy. So do not waste time complaining about how tough things are or what happened to you because you own everything that happens to you. Owning one story is the stuff of trailblazers. Trailblazers don't complain about what is happening to them or, their, or what happened to their forefathers. They make things happen. They are the ones who break away from the trampled path to go the undiscovered, uninhabited way. One trailblazer tonight, I know there are many trailblazers in the hall tonight, but there's one trailblazer whose story caught my eye, and it's one student graduating, Ngobo Nengiza, who today becomes the country's first law graduate with a hearing disability. Ngobo was born and raised in Tete, location in Ngamak, a district in the Eastern Cape. He is the fifth of six children and the only person in the family with a hearing disability. Motivated by a desire to seek equality, he resolutely chose to face the odds. And today, his example is in itself a victory for social justice as he graduates with an LLB degree, with aspirations of pursuing a career in human rights law. Ningiza, who is spending this year, 2019, pursuing his LLM degree, is currently working on applications to law firms in order to serve his articles next year. But this is another challenge, since law firms have thus far been hesitant to accept him, given that they do not have facilities for deaf candidates. He's not giving up. He's moving on because he's a trailblazer. Trailblazers use their ticket for admission to live. They shake hands with fear. They look him straight in the eye, shake his hand, and enter the gate boldly. They are willing to embark on an untapped journey in spite of being scared. And that's what Ningiza is doing. They hold hands with fear because they're willing to risk adventuring into the unknown rather than remaining comfortable in the knowing and the predictable. So I encourage you tonight to be a trailblazer. 
If you're ever in doubt, if you ever think it can be done or not, think of Nguiza. But of course, to be a trailblazer, you have to be brutal, brutally courageous, brutally sensitive, brutally open, brutally protective, brutally intuitive, brutally aware, brutally honest, brutally ambitious, brutally fallible and imperfect. You have to be brutally yourself. Trailblazers are always, always brutally and unapologetically themselves. So go out there and be brutally and apologetically yourself. After all, you're a UCT graduate. Congratulations. By virtue of the authority conferred upon me, I hereby dissolve this congregation of the University of Cape Town.